Hello? There you go. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, I would like to call to order the meeting of the Hamilton Wyndham Regional School Committee on Thursday, May 18th, uh, 2023 at 7 p.m. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite you to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Okay, um, so we'll start off this evening. Um, oh, first, see, nobody reminds me anymore. I should let you all know this meeting is being, being recorded. recorded. I know, where's Anna? <laughs> I know. Um, uh, and live streamed on HW Camp. Um, okay, we'll start off with um, citizens' comments. Um, would uh, somebody has, Julia, would you be willing to be our timer? Mm -hmm. Um, if you are a citizen and you'd like to offer comments, um, I will invite you to um, come forward, uh, identify yourself, please um, give us your name and spell your name for us so that we get it um, correctly uh, noted in the minutes. Um, I'd ask you to keep your comments to three minutes. Um, and I want um, to just mention that um, public comment, citizens comment is an opportunity for you to be heard and for us to listen. Um, so it's a chance for us to hear your voice and for you to voice your opinions and thoughts publicly. Um, there's an opportunity for people to um, provide comment via Zoom um, or here in person, and I'm gonna just start in the room. If there's any citizen who would like to make a comment, please approach the podium. Welcome. Uh, good evening, thanks for the opportunity to speak briefly. Uh, I'm Jack Simons, 245 Sagamore Street, Hamilton. I'm a parent and grandparent, although my kids went through the Danvers Public Schools. Um, and I'm a member of the Hamilton Environmental Impact Committee, whom I represent tonight. Uh, S-I-M-O-N-S is how it's spelled. And um, I'm also a retired, recently retired uh, child clinical psychologist, and I want to talk to you briefly about climate change and the importance for children's mental health. Um, and if possible, if it's not out of order, I'd like to share a one-page um, study summary is that possible to do to share that with the committee sure can you we could we hand do we need to have it now or can we hand it out at the end after your comments whatever you prefer let's do it at the, after okay your comments. great yep. thanks it's from the british journal nature it's called young people's climate anxiety revealed in landmark survey um, after i retired i worked briefly for dmh during the pandemic doing some consulting on kids looking for department of mental health services and i saw uh, to my dismay, what is documented in the literature, which is a big increase in anxiety and depression among young people. And I'm sure there are many causes for that. Undoubtedly, the pandemic, which was a terrifying event for all of us and created a lot of isolation and loss of structure, uh, was a big factor. But I think another part of it is that kids worry about what the world will look like. And that's what this study seems to document. Um, I've seen it in my own children. <laughs> and I think it makes sense that these young people are not stupid. <laughs> they look around to see what we are doing to uh, protect their future. And one of the, the things you read in here is that they're not only worried about climate change, they're worried about government inaction. So we're all a small part of this. <laughs> That's part of the problem with climate change. It seems like you know nations and G7 should fix it, but, but we all know there are little things we can do, even the district, and the district has made some 30 great- 30 seconds. Th thank you. Great commitments to climate change. So I just wanted to reinforce how important it is not only to make those commitments, but to make action visible 
to children and families who are looking for signs of hope rather than reasons to abandon hope and who are looking for models of how to act effectively. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'd be happy to take those and distribute Great. them. Great. And um, I'm collecting other literature. Thank you. Okay. I will distribute those. Um, okay. Um, is there anyone else here in the audience that would um, like to present public comment? Okay. Um, Mr. Tracy, do we have anyone on Zoom? No way. Okay. All right. At this point, we'll close the Zoom link. Um, and. Uh, we will move forward. Um, okay. uh, next up, I think I gave it to Jen. Hold on. Next, I'm going to ask Francesca to read a portion of the school committee protocols. I believe it's protocol number four. Sure, Dina. So as elected members of the Hamilton Wenham Regional School Committee, we, including the superintendent, accept the high honor and trust that has been placed in us to ensure that the students of the district receive the best education possible. To that end, we hereby commit to the following in the conduct of our business. Point number four. School committee members will channel requests for information, reports, and data through the superintendent and the school committee chair rather than to staff. The superintendent will ensure that each member of the committee has equal access to this information in a timely manner. Recognizing the importance of proactive communications and avoiding surprises, school committee members will, whenever possible, contact the school committee chair and or the superintendent in advance of a meeting if they have questions or concerns about an agenda item, or will ask the chair at least 48 hours prior to a meeting that an item be placed on the agenda. Thank you. Um, and Amy, would you be willing to read a portion of the mission statement? Sure. The Hamilton Wenham Regional School Committee will lead and inspire a district that inspires all students to realize their fullest potential and feel a powerful sense of individual and collective belonging. Thank you. Okay. Um, next up, we have the consent agenda. Um, are there items that people would like to hold from the consent agenda? I have a couple. Um, I am going to hold two things. One is the minutes from May 4th, 2023, um, and the other is the Spain field trip. When you're ready, Francesca, we can yes. take a motion. Okay, a motion to approve the, consult the consent agenda with the exception of the minutes from May 4th, 2023, and the field trip to Spain, 2024. Second. Second, Second by Julia. <laughs> All right. Um, all those in favor? And that is unanimous, and the motion passes of the five members present. Um, so I just had a quick question. This is actually really a question for you, Bev, on the May 4th minutes. Um, there was a part of it that was highlighted, and I assumed that that was just maybe your notes that didn't. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, well, I'm glad I asked then. So, <laughs> excellent. Um, I don't know that that was, um, so the portion that's highlighted, Mr. Tracy has put it up there, the portion that was highlighted was regarding uh, David Frankel's update on the policy subcommittee. I, I think it's probably sufficient just to say that you provided an update, um, unless sure. you felt like there was anything that needed to be amended. Yeah, no, um, I did. Uh, other than can you talk right into the mic to help Sorry, me out? Sorry, other than to say that the, the first meeting of the new subcommittee is is uh, May 22, uh, 22 or 27? 20, 22. 22, yeah. Two, yeah. Um, do you feel like that needs to be reflected in the minutes, or are we comfortable just having that be that the committee is aware of that? I mean, for because th that was stated at the meeting, I think that would yeah. be okay. accurate. Yeah. All right. So if you just add the next meeting of the policy and legislative subcommittee will be May 22nd at 7 p.m. Okay. 
Um, can we have a motion? Yes. A motion to approve the minutes from May 4, 2023 with the addition of uh, what was just discussed, which is the date for the next uh, committee, uh, May 22nd. Second. Second by Amy. Is there any further discussion? All right, all those in favor? That's unanimous of the five members pass, present and the motion passes. Um, okay, uh, next up was um, I held the field trip. Um, I held it because I think we have some more information um, regarding the trip. Oh, if the committee will allow us, we would like to have our uh, foreign language department head, Matt Jones. Mr. Jones is here to do a quick presentation on Spain 2024. I'd like to invite him up to present. Welcome. Okay, good evening. Thank you for having me back. It's nice to see you all again. Um, as Mr. Tracy said, I'm Matthew Jones. I am the department chair for the World Language Department. And um, I'm here to share a little bit about our proposed field trip to Spain for the middle school for next year. So um, our trip is, uh, the trip we're proposing is to Sevilla in the southern part of um, Spain for February, the dates are Thursday, February 15th through Saturday, February 24th. Um, I do have a short video. I can send that along, or if you would like to view it, I can play that. It's about two minutes long. Let's see it. Go see for it. it. <laughs> So the trip that we're proposing is uh, traveling with Escuela Idiomas Carlos Quinto, which is a Spanish language school in Sevilla. And the trip, um, the, the company 
that we would tour with um, does classes in the morning for the students, so they have a couple of hours of immersion, um, Spanish language training, and then they use what they've learned to go out in the afternoon and explore the city. Um, there are several different um, locations that, that we explore, um, and they get to practice and use the language in the real life setting of the country that they're studying in school. Um, so there is a total of 10 hours of immersion. Um, the trip features two different day trips, uh, bus trips to Granada and Cordoba. And in the afternoons, there are cultural visits, tours, and then there's some free time for shopping and exploring. Um, there also is the opportunity to participate in a flamenco show and workshop, as well as a cooking workshop. Uh, the tours, some of the places that we would tour to would be the Alcazar Plaza, uh, Palace, the Cathedral of Seville, the Setas of Seville lookout platform, some ruins in um, Italica, the Almodovar Castle, the Mosque of Cordoba and the Jewish Quarter, and the Alhambra Palace. So, so those are some of the, the um, locations that are set up on the tour. So some of the details, the price is approximately $2,500 per student. Um, that includes the air transportation, local transportation, accommodations, all the missions to the different sites that we would visit, um, all meals, and then the services of the tour managers. Um, there is a little bit of fluctuation to price adjustment for flights and then the bus to and from the airport. Um, we did a, a school bus to the airport when we went to Puerto Rico, so we would probably do the same thing. And this price is based on 30 participants. Um, the meals, there's full board uh, at the Carlos Quinto campus. So it's actually a dorm style uh, campus. Uh, the students stay in double occupancy rooms. And it's a brand new campus from what I have learned. Um, they've, they've sent a lot of information um, about their facilities. Uh, looks really very well uh, appointed and maintained. Um, so we are aiming for 30 students and five faculty chaperones, uh, myself, Catherine Frost, Gina DiNapoli, two other Spanish teachers at the middle school, and then a couple of other chaperones as well. And this trip would be open to seventh and eighth grade students enrolled in Spanish classes. Um, the students must be in good academic and disciplinary standing, and teachers can consult with administrators for recommendations on individual students. Uh, George Orwell said, I would rather or sooner be a foreigner in Spain than in most countries, how easy it is to make friends in Spain. And I've included a few recommended resources at the end, uh, just a couple of Instagram links on travel sites, uh, the Spain official tourism website, the website for the school, Carlos, uh, Idiomas, uh, Idiomas Carlos Quinto, the Lonely Planet, and then also the Travel Triangle, Seven Reasons to Visit Spain at Least Once in Your Lifetime. So those are just resources that you can peruse. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, questions? No questions. All right. Uh, I have one comment. I've been to Sevilla. It's absolutely gorgeous. So yeah. I know. I wish my daughter was going to be still in middle school <laughs> next year. <laughs> But um, that's fantastic. I think it's just wonderful that we're able to travel again and do that again. Yes, yes, we're excited to offer this for our students. Yes, oh, so excited. Um, I just have a question about um, history. I don't know what the history, you haven't been on this particular trip. I have not personally, no. Okay. Um, this have, trip have there been middle school trips to Spain before? There have, yes. Um, so Kevin Sano, our former curriculum leader, used to run trips. I taught for the last 12 years at the high school and then moved to the middle school this year when I took over the department chair position. So um, Kevin had brought students to Spain before. And I think I may have actually accidentally skipped one of my slides. Uh, yes, our curricular connections, it just flew right past that. <laughs> um, so our curriculum in the seventh and eighth grade is focused on Spain. And there are many, many different topics. I won't read all those right now. but. Uh, many different connections that we'll be making um, with our our curricular focus. Um, okay, other questions? I have a question similar to what we asked last week. Of course. Last, 
meeting about um, will there be funds available for students who might not be able to go otherwise? Yes, so we're going to do the same thing at the middle school that we're doing at the high school. We're going to offer a couple of opportunities for fundraising um, and also working with the Carlos Quinto um, school, they have a program where parents can also donate for other kids who want to travel um, where there may be a need or needs-based program. Um, so a couple of things we've talked about already have been uh, some of the restaurants in town that are willing to um, partner with us. Um, maybe a car wash, we'll see, they're middle schoolers, so we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little ambitious. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. And um, I noticed you didn't, you have not, I know it's a long ways away, but you haven't selected all the chaperones yet. Do you, in the, from your past experience, has it been an issue to get the correct number of chat? I know we've had a no. few funny years here, but <laughs> before that, is of it, course. do you anticipate any issues around getting the right number of chaperones? No, I don't. Uh, we should have a six to one ratio. Uh, we've actually talked with our principal, Dr. Best. Um, he's considering it. And there usually are more chaperones who want to travel than we can bring. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Um, I think, uh, yeah, we just need a motion. Motion, yeah. Yep. Give it to vote. Okay. So, a motion that we approve the um, field trip to Spain in 2024. Oh, as presented. Oh, as presented. <laughs> yeah, as just presented. Second. Second by Amy. Is there any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? And that is unanimous of the five members present and the motion passes. Thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to come and share with Thank us. You, um, I'll it, Thank you. It really does make a difference for us yeah. to get to actually see, you know, like it's one thing to read the, you yes. know, the permission, to them, but it's, it, it helps to have you come and see. So thank you for well, taking the time. Thank you, it's such that. a valuable experience for our students who are excited to be able to offer it. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, um, I know that we've already um, gone through the consent agenda. I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that we had some pretty significant donations um, on there. Um, and I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that and thank both the Friends of Cutler and um, DECA um, for those really substantial donations that we just Great. accepted. Yeah. Yeah. Great to have that support DECA for the kids. Yeah. Wonderful. So nice to see all the community names. Yes. Very yeah. Really cool. yeah. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Uh, all right. New business. I think we're going to talk about the last day of school. New business. Yes. The um, each year the school committee votes for the on the uh, final day of school this year. We had uh, two days during the school year that were canceled. One during vacation that we don't have to make up. Um, that was the easiest one I had to cancel. That is easy. <laughs> but the, uh, the two days uh, bring us to Friday the 16th of June as the last day of school. So we just need a, a, a vote to secure that and get that out to people tomorrow in the weekly. And that's going to be a, a half day? It's a half day of school always, yeah. Okay. Always has been, yeah. It's 11.15, right? When is it 11.15 well, it across oh. schools? 10.30. At the high school, middle school, 11:15, the elementary. Okay. My other question is: Is that when the eighth grade walkout would be? I think he's. I think he's doing it. Not walkout. Walk. <laughs> out, walk up. I don't know what it's called. Moving up. Moving, moving up. Moving up. Morning, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. He's gonna, he, he. I think he's going to do that Thursday. Oh, okay. I'll double check, but I think he's going to do it on Thursday because okay. it's <coughs> really fast. On Friday, you know, you get in and oh, yeah. boom, 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 and kids are mostly getting their things turned back in, making up tasks, you know, just returning all the things that they have yeah. somewhere in their room, you know, so. Okay. Kind of a crazy day. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Should I make the motion? Yep. All right, so I motion that we approve that the last day of school is going to be Friday 16th of June. Second. Second. Second by Amy. All right, is there any further discussion? Okay, uh, all those in favor? And that is unanimous of the six members present. Welcome. <laughs> um, 
Um, all right, and more calendar. It's another tricky one. Um, just so that we continue to be transparent, we uh, have been going back and forth with our professional development committee and uh, aligning, we, you know, we made the shift to bring all four professional development days to the front end of the school calendar so that it wouldn't disrupt during the school year. Mm -hmm. um, also gives us an opportunity to, to better focus um, on some of the initial early trainings that are required by the state, required by the federal government, which are required by us, uh, so we can get all those things taken care of early on. The, this calendar change is simply moving um, the sixth and ninth grade orientation, as it was noted on the calendar, from Tuesday, that second professional development day, to Wednesday, the third professional development day. Um, it just works out better time-wise, and for our professional development committee, they needed those first two days to be fairly consistent and congruent so that they could do overlapping trainings and things like that. So that's the only change that's that's on here, and um, we thought I'd just bring it back so that everybody could see it again and just revote it so that people were clear in that change. David? Yeah, I have one quick uh, one issue, I think. the the. Um we still have the early out, um, particularly for the elementary kids, at the middle in Wednesdays. And uh, I just wonder whether, you know, that, that is such a point of irritation um, amongst so many parents, th those that are working and particularly self-employed ones. Right. I just wonder whether, uh, I, I don't know the, the additional expense, given that the why, that whole thing with the why and the um, David, can I just ask you to talk uh, to the mic? Sorry, sorry. given that the Y and the um, community house kind of don't seem to be able to hash it out, what would it cost just to address that um, with our own staffing, so that that we're not st that well, parents are not stuck with that for all kids? Yeah, no, no, just for the elementary grades because they're the ones that. So keeping them on a Wednesday? Yeah, I think you'd, I think <laughs> the reality is we should we should really take a look at that through negotiations. Um, because it's already a negotiated item in the in the in the uh, oh, the teachers. teacher contract, okay. it's not something that we can just say, "Yep, we're going to change it." So that's why we didn't address it. Mm -hmm. um, this calendar here is the first change for me to take uh, the half days we were using for elementary schools. They would let kids we send kids home at 11:15 and do parent conferences. I took those out because I felt it was a better, better priority to have kids in school. I agree with that as, as well on Wednesdays too. Yeah. Um, and our parents did too, if you remember the survey earlier in the year. So I think it's just really something we'd have to try to address in negotiations if we decide to go down that road. Yeah. Do, uh, uh, would plan B to have um, people on contract to do this, not, not school, or is there some obligation that you've got to have school specific staff? Sorry, if I'm it, not. It's hard to say, I, I would guess if you were teaching the, the staff would be, would expect, I think the union would expect that they would be the teachers. So then you'd have to negotiate some type of a pay structure and uh -huh. design okay. of the program that based on the contract. I, yeah, I wasn't even I thinking. I'm just going to jump in and say, um, I'm sorry, I, I, I kind of feel like this is beyond the scope or outside the four corners of the motion that we're, yeah. it, it's a valid conversation, but I don't think it fits into this I can put it conversation. on future. Yeah, we uh, we could. Okay. Um, we could just, uh, and I'm I'm. Other people can chime in if you. I'm just. Should we p really put it on an agenda to, until we talk to the teachers? Well, we have we do have feedback from the the survey we did early in the year, from staff and families. We got quite a quite a bit of uh, feedback. And I don't have that in front of me, but what did the staff say about? Um, it was a little bit all over the place, but there was a there was definitely a. a push towards let's do something different okay you know parents especially because you're obviously if you're a working parent you got to figure out what to do with your child at you know 130 or yep. been there done that 1245 <laughs> right right <laughs> I, so. no I in no way was not saying I was in no way saying it's not a worthy discussion I was just sort of remembering that the that the four corners of this motion are very specific I, right now I think my question mm. is is does that fall under negotiations and as such does it fall under um, something we should be talking about in open meeting oh uh, yeah um, I think it's I think mr. Tracy already alluded to that it seems 
we don't know, but it seems highly likely that if you were to make a change like that, that it would be discussed <coughs> in negotiations, and we're certainly not at that particular point yet, but it doesn't mean that we couldn't have an agenda item that said, for example, like, let's review the various feedback that we've gotten from people, yeah. and I mean. And we could do another survey. I mean, we're still working with, I have a meeting with the community house on Tuesday, mm -hmm. uh, and then another meeting with the Y on Wednesday to, to still try to work something out between all the parties, so. We're trying to still figure some avenues out that could be helpful to families. Yeah, so that would avoid having to use teachers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can, that, that sounds easier. <laughs> okay. So to, well, to, maybe, bring it back, to bring it back to the motion on the table, which I, I just have a clarifying question. That the, I understand the change is that, that we're moving, which is actually quite important for parents of sixth and ninth graders mm -hmm. to know the date that we're moving the date so that the date is august 30th for orientation for sixth and ninth graders i thought and maybe i didn't understand i thought eric that you and i had some had some conversations about kindergarten orientation yep they're still trying to figure out whether they're going to do it on that day or another okay so they're, for they're, they're still yeah the, the elementary i don't know if you remember we're still adjusting the um parent conference calendar yep we actually sent a, a, a version to the teachers union and we're just waiting for a response that will help us to drive kind of because we want Dean and I've had several conversations about starting kindergarten kids when everybody else starts we we basically said that to principals the kindergarten kids shouldn't be coming a week later mm -hmm. start when everybody else starts so we're hoping that they'll take advantage of this these four days as well to have an open house so yeah. we're, we're just waiting for information to come back from the teachers union that we actually I just sent it to them so I guess I just I feel like it's important to as before the school year ends it's important for those yeah. groups which are understand you know those three groups kindergarten sixth grade ninth grade are obviously the groups of people who are going to be likely having some I don't want to say anxiety but like anticipation about the new year and that it's the better the f further in advance they can plan their schedules right mm -hmm. we want to make sure that they do know exactly what's and happening and the reason we're the, one of the reasons we're waiting for the feedback from the union is um, taking away the early release days for parent conferences had us look differently at our schedule in our teachers contract they have built into the contract two evening nights two, two evening opportunities Mm -hmm. um, one they usually use for an open house or a curriculum night, the other they'll do something fun with. We're actually going to want to use one of those for parent conferences so that, you know, as we talked about that kind of equity thing, when you know, <coughs> you're a parent that works all day and you need to mm -hmm. come to a conference at night, you can't here. So we want to be able to open that opportunity up for families that yeah. need that option as well. So I'm hoping it sorts out four or five different problems, but they, uh, have the information and I've asked them to get it back to me no later than next Friday um, so they'll once they get back then I'll be able to make any adjustments we need okay yeah I guess I did that my feedback would just be I'd like to get let those kindergarten parents know yeah oh, absolutely. as soon as possible they're already asking they're, yeah, yeah, yeah they're you know it's, ex it's we exciting have a big number, we have a big <laughs> number of exciting. kindergarten yeah. kids again so, um, okay. Exciting. Okay. Francesca. So, good question. So, we, we want to move the date to August 30th, and what, when was it? When August was 29th it? was the original date. Oh, okay. 29th was the original. Okay. Yeah. It should be um, orientation, mm -hmm. like the ninth grade orientation from the 29th to, to the, the 30th. 30th. Yep. Okay. All right. Glad. Do we have a motion? No. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. So, I'm <laughs> going to have it now. So I move that we approve the change to the 2023-2024 school calendar so that we make the following change that the orientation day for sixth and ninth grade will be moved from August 29th to August 30th. Second. Second by Jen. All right, is there any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? All right, and that is unanimous of the six members present, and the motion passes. Okay. We are on record-setting pace here. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't think we have anything on finance and operations, I don't think. Nope. Nope. Okay. 
Um, capital finance? Haven't met yet. Nothing. Uh, oh, can I just say something? Yeah. I, that email didn't go through. Can you just resend it? Sorry. I don't know why I couldn't get the, the scheduling email. I didn't get it either. Oh, okay. Never mind. Thanks, Thank Jenny. All right. All right. So capital finance working on scheduling, it sounded like. <laughs> okay. <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, policy? Uh, still send. Monday. Sure. Monday. Oh, Monday. Okay. Yep. Um, negotiations. Um, I guess uh, David is, our chair is not here. Um, we uh, did have an initial meeting uh, yesterday, yesterday. yesterday. Um, nice with the uh, newly formed teaching assistant uh, union. And so we're just getting underway in that uh, bargaining, in that process. Um, and our next meeting is, uh, I don't know off the top of my head, I should. <laughs> I was counting on David to tell me. Um, we need the next meeting. The yeah. That's right. It's the third, right. We're two, uh, two weeks on the, th on the 31st. We're going to meet. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we actually um, did get several dates on the calendar, which was uh, actually pretty productive to get a bunch of dates on the calendar so that we can um, hopefully, you okay. know, make some decent progress. Okay. Um, all right. Back to you, Eric. Back to me, superintendent's report. Um, go back to page one here in my notes. A number of things to report. We, you know, this, as I said, last meeting, May is the, the nightmare month where everything comes together all at once and we're out every single night doing something. Uh, it's exciting though. It's really exciting to see kind of all these different culminating activities that, that we had uh, middle school, high school concert. In the past couple of weeks, we've had the art show, which was unbelievable, amazing art. Um, we had the, uh, yesterday we had the amphibious human powered vehicle race. I always have to get that right. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, which has really blossomed into a big deal. It, it's, I remember the first one we did, Jeff uh, Walsh, a technology head teacher, he, um, you know, started it and it was just a race. Then it was like, hey, let's figure out how to get them across the pond. And mm -hmm. that was a bit of a a trial the first time we did it. Lots of kids got wet, um, but <laughs> I noticed uh, yesterday many of the kids' vehicles floated <laughs> all the way across, so, so that was helpful to be able to get them all across. I was so sad to miss that yeah, yesterday. <laughs> yeah, but uh, lots of fun events like that where culminating activities, and for people who don't know, the FabTech class, that is their year-long activity from paper design to a 3D printed version to learning how to do things like weld and make metal parts and figure out how gears work and the physics of all of these um, different things like buoyancy and versus weight. And it's, it's really a, an interesting process to follow. So uh, mm -hmm. that, our musical events and our art events are all these like amazing culminations of the work kids put in through the years at our schools. And I think it's a, you know, it's a testament to the work our teachers are putting in, the work our kids are putting in, our families supporting all of that. It, it really comes together during, during May. Uh, next week, the uh, Adventure to Washington, D.C. for eighth grade kicks off once again. <laughs> um, so the class will be going on Tuesday, I believe. Yep, Tuesday. Uh, very exciting. Um, senior events we have uh, today was actually the final um, activity for seniors, if you will, when you when you kind of close out the year, they do seminars. So they, they do these little bit how-to seminars that are a couple hours long, and they can be something like changing a tire, uh, how to change a tire, how to live with your college roommate. <laughs> how, you know, so there's a lot of different opportunities like that, and kids come in for the last couple of days, and we shift gears on them, and they had a pancake breakfast, and, and they did, you know, some fun things as well. Um, it started out earlier in the week where they, they were at uh, Fenway Park on Monday. Uh, they did their pancake breakfast Wednesday, senior seminars yes, uh, yesterday and, and uh, today. And then tomorrow they uh, daringly head off to Six Flags. Fortunately, the weather will be nice. We sure uh, we want to go to Six Flags again? Six Flags, <laughs> yeah. Six Flags. Six Flags. But uh, 
Yeah, so they'll leave tomorrow morning early, go to Six Flags. Kids love it. Oh, it's a good, it's nice a good time. Um, and then next week, final exams will kick in for our seniors. And then uh, the following week, it really gets busy. After Memorial Day, we have uh, scholarship night. That's the 24th. Um, that's by invitation only, 6.30 in the high school auditorium. We have uh, the senior prom on the, the 25th at the Beauport in Gloucester. Um, then we have the Seniors Helping Senior event, which is a big deal for our senior citizens in the community. Uh, I know Lisa Heights spends many an hour now taking phone calls and coordinating who's going where. And um, it's great for the kids. It's great community connecting activity. And you know, you get the same people that will call and say, okay, can they put my mulch down again? Or can they help me get this out? So it's a, it's a great opportunity for our kids to be out in, in the community. Mm -hmm. And then Wednesday is, um, they started their rehearsals for mm -hmm. candlelight and graduation senior farewell is that night and it's really a fun opportunity for them to get together for the kind of the last time they get their yearbooks um lots of uh end of kind of end of ending year activities uh they usually get something like chipotle and all hang out in the cab and music and have some fun together for one last time and then thursday they'll do their um uh graduation rehearsals and then we go to the the uh, elementary school so whatever elementary school you went to you get your cap and your gown and you go to your elementary school and they they do a march through each of the schools and it is um, it is amazing because the kids at the elementary schools make signs and they know kids and they you know it's really you know, it's 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 kind of the, the best way to end it for our seniors where their kids get to see them in first and second and third grade and cheer them on through and you know they get to touch the gowns and talk to the kids and they have you know cookies after together so it's it's a fun event um and then that night at eight o'clock is candlelight and that's uh, a great ceremony if you've never been uh, i urge you to come and experience it it's only about 45 minutes long but it is uh, a, a kind of a somber event but it's also a nice way to to end it out for the kids uh graduation rehearsal on friday morning and then we will do graduation on saturday june 3rd at 10 a.m um and then I'm going to hold the rest because there's, there's more activities in June, but we will uh, we'll hold the rest of them. I also forgot to mention uh, last week was also the junior prom. So lots of lots of fun and activities going on right now. And if you're a high school or middle school person, you're, <laughs> you're working Exhausted. lots of 14 hour <laughs> days. But um, it's, it's just it's good. It's good for the kids. It's a good way to end out. So it's been a really it's been a really strong year and exciting time. Oh. And that's all I have. All right. Questions? Thank you. Um, all right. Um, all right. I guess next is me. I don't have a lot. I do. I have some. Um, just a reminder um, that your evaluations for the superintendent evaluations are due a week from today, on May twenty fifth, um, and they're going to be sent to David. Um, and he's going to be compiling, and it is, he's not here, but I'm going to just speak for him, that it is really important that you do this on time. It is, uh, I did it last year, and it takes a long time, and it's, so I'm just going to put that out there, that, like, really needs to get done on time and be sent to David. Yep. So we should send them directly to him? Yep, you should send them directly to him. I, um, last year I asked people to um, create them put them in a PDF and send them to me just because it's really important that there's no way that anyone could change the you know oh, that yeah, you want to yeah. have it um, so should it be the, the word document PDF or should we because it's a signature place should we print it out sign it then PDF that I don't think you, I actually I, I I've already worked on mine I just used the little font to make a signature <laughs> Like I just, you know, um, but uh, it, the important thing is just, it, I mean, in other words, no one is actually going to do that is, but I'm more thinking of the accidental, like if it was sent just as a Word document when you're that working with all corrupted. seven of them, you could accidentally change something. Um, so yeah, no, I have no worries that anyone's going to be intentionally trying to. Um, okay. So yeah. Um, yeah, so you can send them directly to David, and you can certainly, again, any logistical problems are totally fine to reach out to David, reach out to me if you're having, like, you know, like a problem, whatever, where it's not 
th should, it, should it be CC'd to you or just nope. only to him? Okay. Nope. Um, and so he will, um, he'll compile and then on the 8th, um, I believe, right, we're gonna. It's up to you. Yeah, well, I, I believe I have it penciled in on the 8th and we'll talk with David, but, um, but certainly before the end of the year, we will, he will bring that compiled document, it'll be on an agenda, we'll have a conversation and we'll invite Anna um, Cedzik to that meeting. Um, she will have written um, her evaluation, she'll be able to participate in, but in the conversation, but she will not, um, since she's no longer a member, she actually won't be able to vote, um, but she will be here to participate. So I just wanna mostly remind you to get it done. Um, so, um, and um, the only thing that I don't, I maybe I missed it, but I don't know that Eric mentioned it. I just wanted to mention that I had the opportunity to go to the senior symposium. Mm -hmm. Was it called the symposium? Yeah. Is that right? Um, and it was a really great opportunity. If, and, and I think, David, you were there, didn't yep, you? You yeah, went yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was funny, I saw you there at the beginning and then I never saw you again. Yeah, I was no. like, I thought he was here somewhere, so we no, must I have just. So I went through six, six different uh, presentations. Yeah, it was, it was just, very good. it was a great opportunity. I w they, so they each get a research, I just wanted to share, because I, I know I like to hear about things. That are, so they got to, it's a topic of their choosing, it can literally be anything and they do a, an in-depth research project and then they it's zero tech like they are standing there face to face which after these past few years is a really good and challenging experience for these kids I'm sure they're standing there face to face talking to you about their research project um, you know just a poster board they don't have any no laptop to hide behind and um, they did a great job and I it's like the diversity of things that people talked about I they, I I'll just give you a few that I saw. There was one about true crime and why, you know, who's drawn to it, why, what the history of it. There was one about writer's block and all the research on right, like why it occurs, how to, you know, how to address it. Um, one I went to on the most effective method for in teaching introductory coding classes. I mean, like, just you name it. They were, and I don't know what, if yeah, you want to add anything that you saw. Ones that caught my attention were the, um, dealing with the opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, that was very comprehensively done. I thought very well done. Okay. Um, there was one, a mar one on marketing. Yeah. Uh, there was one on saving, I think it was the striped bass. Yeah. That, that, that was being bass. fished out. And, uh, and he was very passionate about that. Um, there was at least another couple. 